seems to be going down in a dose state. As the rift between the national chairman of the All Progressive Congress, Adam Soshomale, and governor of Edo State, Godwin Obaseki, seems to be deepening. However, the president has stated that the party is capable of handling the crisis. The president's position came on Sunday, barely 24 hours after the raging political dispute between the chairman and the state governor turned violent on Saturday. Still with me in the studio is political analyst Francis Chilaka. Thank you for staying with us. Okay, Saturday's violence. First, what's your take on the presidency's stance that the party can handle the matter when it is the party leadership, the national chairman of the party, who is embroiled in this. How does that figure? I, I think what the presidency is trying to say is that the national chairman of the party should apply a lot of wisdom and caution. You don't throw a child with the bathwater away. And I think it is high time that um, the national chairman of APC uh, Adam Soshimole realizes the fact that he is no longer the governor of Edo State. But he was quite clear about that. He said he knows that he's not going to run for governor. He's not going to come back to the state and, you know, stuff like that. So why would he be having talks around him and all of that? But the entire situation, what's your take on it? Should it have gotten to the state? It shouldn't have, but I think the whole thing is all, like I keep saying, it's all about power tussle. The Nigerian political system is, uh, is not about leadership, it's about power. Everybody wants to be in control of the party machinery in the state. So this is where the problem lies. It's not about um, Obaseki as a governor, no. It's not about Adam Sushimole as a national. The problem is who controls the party structure in the state. Hold on to your thoughts. We have on the telephone uh, with us uh, from Edo State, uh, the state chairman of APC, Barista Anselm Ajezwa. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. You were quoted as describing Saturday's event as unfortunate and disgraceful, and uh, it puts Oshomale in a difficult position. You also urged them both to take responsibility uh, for the occurrence. Um, he doesn't seem to have done this. What's your take? Well, what I told you is my own considered opinion. And uh, what they eventually do, I think that's entirely up to them. Okay, are there factions in your party? At the moment, yes. we have um, a group of people who are trying to form a faction. And uh, we are taking steps to deal with that. What, what are these steps? Is it going to yield result in any um, very soon? Because this seems to have gone on for quite a while. Uh, well, we don't need to be violent about it. Um, we are all guided by the constitution of the party, and it's very clear and express. It forbids the organization of any parallel group or faction. And as a leadership in the state, we do have a duty to, uh, to ensure that such a thing does not take place. And um, a committee has been set up. I know they've been meeting. Uh, very soon they will make their findings known and their recommendations. And then, of course, the state executive will act. And we will pass it on to the National Working Committee for further action. Um, what's your take? The presidency seems to have a lot of faith that you and the other leaders of the party can resolve this uh, issue. Do you have the same faith that this will happen soon? Well, of course, you know, as they say, politics is local. Um, we, we have a responsibility as a leadership to resolve issues as they arise amongst us. It's just unfortunate, you know, that uh, this situation is clearly being mismanaged. What would be a better way to manage this situation as it is right now, in your opinion? I don't see a better way than dialogue. All right. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you. All right. You heard his thoughts. What do you have to say about it? Well, it's not far from what I said. It's all about power tussle. 
it's all about power. Okay, is, is, it, is it truly, um, because the former governor, the national chairman, gave a press conference and he is quoted as saying that it was just an effort to discredit him. Um, it's uh, something to say he's mocked in his hometown uh, and all of that. Does this signify somebody who is actually looking for a resolution to the problem, like he say? You know, um, Adam Sushimoli is a very, um, uh, you know, First of all, we all know how he became a governor. He became a governor on the wings of labor. And, you know, the, the language of union is force, force, force. Now, after eight years as a governor, he's no longer a, union, a unionist. He should calm down. You see, this is where this problem starts from. Let me tell you where it is. So long as we have people who are governors, after eight years, they go to the Senate. Until we resolve that issue. Because the Senate has become a home for ex-governors. I won't be surprised tomorrow if all of this is, is pointed to that same direction, that he wants to be a senator. But how can that be? Because he has come out to say that he's not interested in being a governor of the state anymore, that he's not going to go back, he's going to go forward. Well, forward the Senate. He is the national president of the for, APC. Is that not a better... It does, you see, it's not about that kind of power. It's to remain relevant in the minds of the people. He wants to be relevant. Okay, what see, is... let, me, let me put it this way. The solution to the whole of all of this is Adam Zoshimole is the national chairman. Ordinarily, we shouldn't be having this kind of bickering in his own state. We should not. He's not fighting an opposition. It's not a fight between PDP and APC. It's a fight within APC. So it means that it's about who controls the power, the structure of the power in those state. If you understand how our politics works, you will understand that the man who controls the power the state, I mean, the, the, the power of the party in the state is stronger than the governor. Where is the interest of the Edo people in all of this conversation? Because uh, uh, since this conversation started, we've not heard, and I saw in the news some, uh, within this period, people protesting about darkness, that they don't have light, they should take away e, um, the, the people that pro, uh, provide, the local discos in that area that provide power, and they are asking that something needs to be done. We also saw stories about roads that are yet to be fixed. But since the door has been in the spotlight, we've not heard of the side of the people. The people will always follow their governor. That is the way it should be. The governor, the way the political parties are structured is such that the governor in the state is the leader of the party in that state. Now, any other person who tries to wield some influence and power is cut to size. We need to have a system where the party is on its own, governance is on its own. See, all what is happening in those streets is a complete, complete distraction. It's almost six months, going to six months or so. So, so do you subscribe to the School of Thought that say this is, um, uh, this is a glorified battle between uh, a political godfather and the son? Because some people have come out to say as much that it's this uh, son trying to rise above uh, the father. Well, we all know that, yes, um, Oshimole was instrumental to Obaseki becoming a governor. But you see, I always tell people something. I take people to the scriptures. What we have in those state that should play out should be that of John the Baptist and Christ. When John the Baptist finished baptizing Christ, what did he do? He fizzled out. You're a godfather, yes, but you do not need to rub it in his face. Give the young man room to work. This is where the problem lies. The young man needs his space. 
There's this subtle way of sh do not actually, because in the press conference, I think I watched a bit of the clip and I read the rest out from the papers. Uh, he, he said something about uh, blaming the deputy governor of the state, that it was the deputy governor of the state that brought all those people that came to harass him and his guests and all of that. Um, let me quickly also add that the deputy governor has come out to say um, the, he's speaking from two sides of his mouth, that there's nothing, how can somebody um, organize talks to come and destroy his own. Uh, so this trade blame game, the trading of blames in the media and all over the place, of what benefit is it in the game of politics? Because you've been talking about the tussle of power, the tussle of power, but of what benefit is it to the people who are supposed to be the focal point of all elected leader? The problem you have in those state is the same problem you have at, in other states. Lack of employment, lack of infrastructure, lack of development. If there was employment opportunities in those state, these so-called talks as they are called today will not be available to be used. Somebody who has a, a, an 8 to 5 a.m., I mean 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. job, and then you have to face about two or three hours traffic to go home, will not be you know, found carrying arms or sticks or anything to disrupt anybody. It's also a pointer to governance, to those in power. Empower the people, create employment for the people. I, I, I actually get very annoyed and frustrated each time the leaders will say, talks. And I ask, who are these talks? They will tell you they are youths. We forget that these same youths were used to bring them to power. When they were going to bring them to power, they are no longer referred to as dogs. They are referred to as vibrant youths. So if you give these youths employed, if you keep them employed, you will not find the people to use. It's unfortunate that the Nigerian youths love being used. But isn't, isn't that something that should concern every well-meaning Nigeria? Because if, what examples are these, let's assume for argument's sake, that this young man follow these people blindly. They see them as their role model. Everything they do in politics, they want to emulate. What precedents are these men setting for these young men who will, whether we like it or not, debt comes to everybody, right? Who will in turn succeed them are we going to have an improved version of this kind of behavior, or should I say a refined version? What then becomes of us? These young men do not see these people as their mentors. Let us be clear on that. A lot of them just believe that if I follow them, I'll probably get 5,000, 10,000, a source of livelihood for a day or two. So it's not about mentorship. That, and that's the truth. Let us not mix these things up. It's not about mentorship. But if you eat today and don't eat tomorrow, what relevance is your following? It's, 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 about the, it's, it's, it's the fact that there's hunger in the land, there's poverty, there's unemployment. So these have made the youths available to be used. I mean, for instance, you're here, you're working. If they ask all the, 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 the ladies in VI, you know, that they're going to go on a, a procession, you, you won't leave the studio and be joining them because you know that if you do that, you lose your job. But this, you see, this, this whole thing about unemployment is the pain of the problem. If they were gainfully employed, they would not be on the street fighting. Shouldn't that be what should be concerning these leaders as against them? What, what can we, can, we, can we demystify the phrase power tussle? Because it seems to explain all kinds of unruly and seemingly seamless behavior. And when I say seamless, I don't mean it in a complimentary manner, you know. The, what is this power tussle? What really is the issue? Because the, the, the national chairman has come to say, I don't have, I've tried to reconcile with the governor of Edo State, but he doesn't seem to uh, be paying heed okay, to my let, efforts. Let me help you, you know. In every state, you have a party chairman, you have a party ESCO. Now, in a, it, it, that same um, uh, position trickles down to local government, to the ward. Now, whoever is in charge of the ward, if you want to contest for, say, House of Rep, you do not come to the state, you go to your ward. From your ward to your, the local government. From your local government, your name is sent to the state. Now, if 
the governor is not in control of the chairman of the party in the world. He's not in control of the chairman of the party, the ESCO at the local government. He's not in control of the ESCO at the state, go um, state level. He has lost. That's the power tussle. So what's the lesson in all of this? Because until we have little time, well, what's the lesson the, the, in all the, of this? Like, like, like the, the party chairman in the industry said, it's all about dialogue. But I will say this. I will say that um, I expect more from Adam Sashimani on two grounds. One, he has been a governor for eight years. And two, he's the national chairman of the party. I expect a lot of restraint from him. I expect a lot of um, um, wisdom. He needs to apply a lot of wisdom in dealing with this situation. Because whatever happens, what, now that the president is saying that this, the, the party can solve its problem, don't forget that whatever they do at the state level, they're sending it to the National Working Committee, where he's also the... He's also there. That was my first question. How well, does he solve yes. the problem? He's in the middle of it. So it's a matter of sitting down, you know, to say, okay, state governor, you're in charge. There's this question, before I let you go, uh, when he gave that press conference, he talked about um, Nigerians not judging him on the basis of efforts to sabotage his reputation. But his antecedents, has it given any such confidence? Because since he became leader, he's been, there's been one controversy or the other. Would you say that um, he's just saying what is, but in another way? It's not just him. Do a study on all the past governors. They're all in the same boat. There are just a few of them that have left government house and you know, restricted themselves to their own house. A lot of them want to be in the news. All the time. Whether for positive or negative. They just want to be there. It's happening across all the states. But the unfortunate thing is that a those states own is worse because it's, it's between... Brothers. Brothers. And the party. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming on the program. I appreciate your thoughts. Right. Last week, a federal high court judge in Ondo State, Justice Abdul Dogo, was abducted by gunmen, demanding a 15 million naira ransom for his release. We spoke about this and the rise in the spate of kidnapping in Nigeria and what to do to stop it. And we got quite a number of feedback from you, our audience. Stay tuned while we showcase some of your responses on the program. Thank you. To be honest, the only thought I have on the scrabble between the national chairman of the APC, Adam Sushomole, and the governor of the state, Godwin Obasaki, is a gentle reminder to everyone watching that there are no permanent friends, enemies, or even brothers in the game of politics. The alliances of politicians are often fickle at best. We should pay less heed to the whims of these politicians who pursue their own personal aims and look more to the people the ruderless youths who follow and do their bidding. What are they learning? 
What might they bring to the table in the future should their rudderless followership get them a seat? Where is the conversation about the interest of the Edo people in recent times? Lots of questions. Thank you for watching the program tonight. Do remember to follow us on all our social media platforms and share your reflections on our programs. Until next time, please be well.